Hey, what it do, everyone out there? I am your host, Will. This is Phantom Frequency, where we get into the entire multiverse of pop culture, comic book movies, um, anime, music. We talk about it all here on the channel. So make sure you dive below into the comment section and let us know what you thought about this latest episode of one of the dopest shows on HBO in a long time and one of the best comic book shows i think out there at least at the moment or in recent memory the penguin of course we're talking about episode six here and a lot went down i don't have a ton of time to talk about it i'm a little crunch for time but we had i had to make sure to get time set aside so we can dive into this episode and there was so much about this episode that i absolutely loved one of the main things i'm really loving with the show is the way that um the character of victor is having such a great connection with oz's family and oz's mom that is and everything and how they're kind of feeling like a tight knit um, kind of um, family and kind of a new surrogate family for Victor due to his family getting wiped out by the flood caused by the Riddler, of course, in the climax of the Batman and how that's all shaken out and affected his life so much to the point of that's how he ended up trying to boost Oz's rims and they met in the first place. So how that all comes full circle to me is really, really strong. And everything that Victor's got to go through in um, and all the kind of character development we see go forward here with him carrying a gun and kind of being a bit more hardened and seeming like he's uh, settled into this kind of crime mafia lifestyle, at least as much as possible. Um, as far as where he comes from and what his background is and just getting to see that was really awesome throughout the episode and the way that he's really actually making the drops for the bliss and really being involved in this whole drug trade that's going on in Gotham is really interesting to kind of see the character kind of um, start to embrace this lifestyle and start to embrace the darker side. And then the tough decision that he has to make later on in the episode when he runs into that guy Squid from his neighborhood that he grew up with that kind of ended up being a little bit of a menace and a little bit of a bully and antagonist in his life coming back around here, kind of demanding Victor get him in on the bliss operation because he's aware that the drops are no longer around anymore. Um, they got rid of that shit and he knows there's a new drug in the street and there's money to be made and he's hassling Victor on how to do it. And Victor at first is going to go to Oz when they're having this conversation after Oz had this really crazy confrontation with his mom that we'll get into. And Victor's looking for some guidance and Oz is like, you sure you don't need any help? And Oz, is, and then uh, Victor's like, yeah, I think I got it. So he ends up uh, having this confrontation with Squid where he essentially tries to pay him off. But then Homeboy gets really pissed and then demands that he takes him there right then and there or else he's going to do something to him. And then Victor kind of lures him into the point to where he reaches for his gun and his pants turns around and shoots homeboy in the neck. And Victor slowly watches him die. And the way that that's having such a psychological impact on the character is right there in Renzi Feliz's face. Who's the actor, of course, and the way that he portrays that and just the uh, guilt that he's already feeling the moment of, or like the moment after he decided to make that choice to take this guy's life. And he got his first kill right here. And really seeing um, Victor really kind of go into the dark side, it'll be interesting seeing how he processes this uh, murder throughout the rest of these two episodes and for the um, uh, and for the penultimate and the final episode of the season, because I believe it's eight episodes. So we only got a couple more weeks here to go and seeing where his character is going to end up by the end of this show to me has always been compelling. But now it has been no more compelling than it is at this moment at the end of episode six and that motherfucking cliffhanger. I'm going to save that for the very end. But goddamn. Woo, man, karma might be coming quick for my boy Vic. But yeah, and then getting into the actual title character himself of Oz Cobb, a.k.a. the Penguin, of course. He's getting the whole operation. Everything's doing well. They're operating underground, and he's really motivating Victor, especially in the top of the episode, saying that they're going to be legends. People will remember their names and that they're going to do a lot of good for the neighborhood and kind of seeing some of the altruistic sort of kind of stuff that Oz has in mind for this fucked up drug, uh, this fucked up uh, gang. Uh, things he's got going on and uh, kind of uniting all these rival gangs together to push the bliss out in the street comes to a boiling point. And by the end of the episode, he has to literally go face to face with all these leaders of these gangs and get them to kind of sign on and click up and go together and go up against uh, the Gigantes and the Maronis now kind of being one, um, one solidified unit, kind of like a merger, if you will. But like, like they say, you know what I'm saying? They're clicked up. And then Oz is getting with all the other gangs, the triads, everyone like that in order to get some power and take them out. And the way that he has to go about it throughout the episode is like always just watching Oz put things together, make his great speech. And that speech that he makes towards the end of the episode is phenomenal. But he's also going through a lot of emotional stuff when it comes to his mom because her health is deteriorating extremely fast. 
And she's really starting to have um, a lot of loss of memory and getting really confused. And I'm not quite sure if it's Alzheimer's. I think he did say the name of the actual disease that the doctor, uh, a doctor had um, uh, prescribed to his mom, but I can't remember the name of it right now. So if you do jump below in the comments and let me know, but I didn't quite catch it or can't remember it. Um, but yeah, so seeing his mom just going through this stuff and ended up in the tub for like hours and just cold water, completely forgetting where she is and everything like that. And Oz having to help her out of the tub and everything. And the heartbreaking interaction that he has with his mom, when she's literally telling him like, when my, when I go like literal vegetable status and I don't know who I am or what I am or where I'm at anymore, you need to kill me. You know what I'm saying? My shit's getting really bad and it's only going to get worse. And she literally wants her own son to kill her. So she doesn't have to live in that state. And while you somewhat can understand where she's coming from on that, it's just so fucked up to ask your kid to do that. And just the whole way that Oz has to process it and kind of, I don't know if he's lying about it or what, because at first he's like, I can't do that, ma. Like, you're my mom. I can't do that. Of course, right? Even seeing that humanity come out in Oz is refreshing. But then seeing him have to kind of agree with her, maybe just to get her to calm down. But I would be shocked if that happens before the end of the season and Oz actually goes through with that. I would be shocked. Because a lot of people have been speculating he might have been the cause of death for his brothers or killed his brothers. I don't know about that per se because Oz doesn't seem like he'll go against his own flesh and blood. But maybe I'm just giving him the benefit of the doubt too much because he's the protagonist and we're getting a little more insight into some of the more sympathetic aspects of him. So y'all let me know where you fall on that. But I don't think Oz would necessarily go that far. But seeing the acting with Colin Farrell and that actress, uh, Deandra, I can't remember her last name. Uh, but seeing them go back and forth and having these interactions is just so well done on an acting level and on a writing and character level. It's so compelling and heartbreaking and just tragic at the same time. And then the way that Oz has to go uh, pretty much damn near uh, rip off this dude's nose that works as one of the politicians in Gotham and gets the lights turned on for his mom and everyone in Crown Point. So he is doing something effectively good for other people, but going about it in a fucked up way and doing it for more selfish purposes in a certain aspect as well. So just that whole gray area that Oz Cobb is kind of operating in, in this series of the penguin in a way that's really fleshing him out, hopefully for the future in Batman two or part three and or part three, I should say really just can't wait to see what's going to happen with Oz going into this and where him clicking up with all these other gangs is going to go. Only time will tell. And like I said, that cliffhanger is a directly affecting him too. crazy shit. And the woman that he was, uh, he was kind of dating in a way that uh, is kind of the uh, leader of the working girls and whatnot. She sold him out and she's going to ultimately be, be the reason why Sophia is there to do what she's about to do. It goes straight up freaking death of the family in this motherfucker, bro. And then Oz also has this great emotional moment where he kind of comforts Vic after uh, Vic tells him that he had to pretty much, uh, cap that uh, bust the cap up and squid's ass and everything and he's you know feeling um obvious um understandably guilty about it and it's really affecting him mentally and oz is kind of like don't worry it gets easier because he knows if you're going to stay in this life you're going to have to kill someone again because it's going to be you or them or whatever the circumstances is you're going to get asked to do it whatever so he knows what it is and oz probably felt the same way as a kid when he started getting into all this crime shit and ended up doing so. And who knows if it went down with his brothers or not. So just getting to see uh, Oz comfort Vic in that moment, I thought was one of the more, uh, uh, one of the, uh, one of the best moments of the episode and of the season for sure. But now as we get into this goddamn cliffhanger going on to the end of the episode where you see Sophia Falcone or G Gigante, sorry, don't, don't come from my neck, yo, but uh, she's standing there in the doorway of the apartment that Oz brought his, uh, that Victor brought, um, Oz's mom to and him and Vic and, um, his mom are dancing to some music that came on. Cause the record player kicked back on after the power came on and they're just having this sweet tender moment. And then you see fucking Sophia Gigante over there standing there with a fucking crowbar ready to beat her to death and possibly Victor too. And I'm like, Oh shit. But you can see, I think there's a bit of hesitation on Sophia's face. So I don't know if she's going to quite go through with this and kind of just take her hostage. You know what I'm saying? If this show goes that dark, I'll be pretty shocked. Like, no bullshit, y'all. Like, I really don't think this show's going to go quite that dark, even though it is a really dark series, especially with the Sophia Falcone flashback episode of Arkham with episode four. But, woo, ah, man. Just that cliffhanger is one of the best cliffhangers I've seen in a minute. Um, but yeah, man, and just seeing Sal Maroney have to cope with the, with the loss of his family and Oz and wanting to get revenge on him is going to be really interesting and 
um, casting Clancy Brown was an excellent choice in that way. So seeing how everything's going to come to a head, especially with this cliffhanger for episode seven, I cannot fucking wait. And I know I'm getting this out there a little bit late, but better late than never. But thank you very much for all of you sticking through to the end and watching the video. Let me know what you thought about this latest episode and where you th and if you think the show is going to stick the landing in these final two episodes and all of that good jazz. And do you think Sophia Gigante is going to go through and straight up beat his mom to death, Jason Todd style? Y'all let me know what's going to happen down below. And I'm going to catch you guys again um, next week, obviously, for these reviews. And we got a couple more spooky videos coming out for you for the Halloween season. And I got a lot of fun content, music-related, especially coming up for my birthday next month, my birthday month, November. So we're going to do a lot of music and some other fun niche content and cover, you know, all the latest and greatest releases out there, Gladiator 2, The Rest of Penguin and Agatha and all that stuff. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for the channel and don't miss any of the dopeness we got going on here. And until next time, make sure you stay safe out there and uh, look out for your loved ones and appreciate each and every one of you. Until then, peace out.